What's up, folks? We have got massive news to talk about today, and X17 has just dropped. This drop comes with a whole set of new features from supporting a new framework to new experimental features to supporting a whole new AI chatbot. In this video, we're going to cover everything you need to know about NX17 and all of the new features that it comes with. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So to get things started, we are massively excited to announce first-party support for Vue. The first place you can see this support is right here inside of the Create NX Workspace command. Now, whenever you use this command to create a new NX Workspace, you'll see Vue as one of the main options to create a view project as soon as you create your workspace. It's out there now, so go ahead and give it a try. Try out Vue with our ESLint support, maybe support for Playwright or Cypress. These tools will be all wired up and ready to go along with your new Vue application. Also, if you have an existing NX workspace like this one here, you can add the Vue plugin by adding the package at NX slash Vue as a dev dependency to your workspace. Once you've done this, you'll have access to all the generators to create Vue applications or libraries inside of your workspace. We're super excited for our community to get their hands on the support and even more excited to talk to members of the Vue community to make sure that the support meets their needs and we're excited to refine the support even further as NX17 goes on. Speaking of which, we already have plans to support a Nuxt plugin in the near future. So keep your eyes peeled for that as well. Up next is Enhanced Module Federation Support. NX already has top of the class module federation support in both of our Angular and React packages. Using generators inside of this package, you can create a module federated host as well as remotes for this host to consume. Using a single command, you can serve your host either with a statically built remote or with a live serving remote. All this existed prior to NX17, but NX17 continues to enhance that support, starting with TypeSafe config. Now, whenever you create a host or remote project, your module federation config will be in TypeScript as opposed to JavaScript. There's a new module federation config interface exported from the at NX slash webpack packet. And this will make sure all of your module federation config is type safe and will give you a better dev experience while you're configuring things. We've also improve type safety across modules. Now, whenever you're dynamically importing a module from a library inside of your workspace, live type safety will be enforced for those imports. We also have a new generator here that will allow you to federate anything. Using the federate module generator as seen on screen here, you can take any library inside of your workspace and create a remote specifically for that library. This will make it even easier to support module boundaries around specific libraries inside of your workspace. And finally, we've added support for managing module version. Using the new module federation config interface, you can specify options here, including a targeted version of a given package. This way you can build specific versions of your packages and target those versions individually for any module consuming that package. We'd love to see what our community has done with module federation, and we're excited for y'all to get your hands on this new support to further enhance your experience with module federation. Up next is more consistent generator paths for our component generators. In our previous version of NX 16.8, we updated all of our plugins that had generators that would create new projects to give more control over what the name of your project project is versus where on the file system that project is located. We're following a similar pattern here with NX 17.0, updating our component generators to give you more control over what the name of zero components are versus where they live inside of your file system. For the most part, you'll be able to specify a directory separate from the name of your component. But there's other niceties here too, like component file names respecting the capitalization given to the generator. Also, generators will now respect your current directory when being called. Be sure to check out the blog post linked in the description to see see the full details that I have on screen here. Up next, we're excited to announce the new beta of our AI chatbot on our nx.dev website. We've integrated our documentation on nx.dev with Supabase and ChatGPT to create a NX assistant, as you can see on screen here. You can ask the assistant any question, and it's going to use our documentation to give you what it thinks is the best answer. You can find the assistant now at nx.dev slash AI dash chat. This feature is still in beta, so please be sure to give us feedback either way to let us know how the assistant is doing. Up next, NX17 is bringing more seamless integration with NX Cloud. NX Cloud is a great way of enhancing NX with a centralized distributed cache to empower your team. But you may have noticed when you ran your NX migrate command for NX17 that the NX Cloud package was removed from your dev dependencies. Don't worry, NX Cloud isn't going away, far from it. We've actually enhanced NX Cloud to be more closely integrated with NX. This came about because we noticed our NX Cloud clients were having a difficult time when their NX Cloud client didn't match with the NX Cloud server. Server. To fix this, we've implemented what we've called a light client, so you don't have to include NX Cloud as one of your dev dependencies inside of your package.json file. Instead, if you've specified an NX Cloud access token inside of your NX.json file, NX will know that you're trying to use NX Cloud and will download the appropriate NX Cloud client based on the server that you're connecting to. In addition to moving the NX Cloud access token property, we've also removed the need to specify cacheable operations inside of this NX.json file. Now you can specify any individual target 
target as cacheable using the cache property. If you use the NX migrate command, we're going to use what was in your cacheable operations originally to inform your target defaults so that the same targets that were cacheable before your migration match the targets that are cacheable after your migration is complete. Just know that now you can turn on or off cacheability individually inside of your project.json files. In general, we've been getting a lot of feedback about there being a lot of duplicated config inside of modes to NX workspaces. We've been working hard to address this by reducing and simplifying config wherever we can. We've actually created a new guide on our docs page for reducing repetitive configuration. You can find a link for this inside of the description below. And be sure to stay tuned because we've got a lot of ideas that we're going to implement throughout the lifetime of NX17 for how we can further reduce config in the future. Up next, the NX repo itself is dog fooding our new NX workflow feature of NX Cloud. If you're not familiar with the term, dog feeding means eating your own dog food or making sure that you're being honest that the tool that you're about to give your users is one that you would want to use yourself. But simply, NX Workflows represents NX entering into the CI provider arena. Previously, NX Cloud could work as an orchestrator for computation resources or agents that were provided to us by some other CI provider like Circle CI or GitHub Actions. But with NX Workflows, NX can now provide those computation resources itself. This lays the foundation for an entire class of new NX Cloud enhancements that we're excited to be working on in the near future. And the NX repo is using these workflows itself now. And you can see how it's going live in the link provided inside the description. At the time of this recording, we've saved almost three years of computation time using the NX Cloud enhancements in just the last 30 days. And a reminder here that NX workflows are still in the experimental phase. We're dogfooding it ourselves, we're piloting it with some of our enterprise clients, and we're excited to open this up to a wider audience soon. Up next, we have improvements to NX task graphing. If you didn't know, you can run the command NX graph to open up a graphical representation of your workspace. This includes a project graph as we can see here, and we can also switch from the project graph to the task graph. We can see on screen here is the NX repo itself, and we're targeting the build target of the NX node package. So we can see here, in order to run a build on the NX node project, we need to run all of the tasks here displayed on the graph in order. But don't worry, NX is going to manage all of that for us. One of the interesting things here though is when you're debugging cast hits or cast misses for any one of these tasks, it's sometimes difficult to figure out what exactly is being determined as an input file for this specific task. So with NX17, we've actually added the improvement here where if you click on one of these nodes to look at any one of these targets, we'll actually display for you the entire list of any files being calculated as part of the inputs for this task. This should be a great tool for helping you to debug that problem specifically of how to find whether a given file is or isn't being calculated as as part of the inputs for this task. Up next is a quick note on the renaming of the at NX linter package to the at NX ES lint package. For reference, if you go back many years, NX originally maintained two different linters, TS lint and ES lint. For convenience, we packaged these up in the same package and called it NX linter. As of NX 17, any residue of the legacy TS lint has now been removed, and so we're renaming the package to at NX slash ES lint. This is just a simple rename, and it's really just to remove any kind of misconceptions that could be around NX provided a all-purpose linting solution for across any languages or any platforms. This package now is only specifically for the ESLint tool, so we're calling it that. So when you run your NX migrate command and you see this new package come up, don't think it's anything new. It's just a rename of the previous ESLinter package. Up next is a new exciting experimental feature called NX Release. James Hedry originally introduced this new top-level command to NX at NXConf in New York City earlier this month. As I mentioned, this feature is still experimental, but the main idea here is that NX will provide you with a robust way of versioning, creating change logs, and publishing your packages. Towards this end, we now support three sub-commands for NX release, version, change log, and publish. And because it's experimental, NX release is still subject to change, but as of right now, the NX repo itself is using this feature to version, create change logs, and GitHub releases, and publish all our packages to NPM. As we continue to iterate on this feature, we intend to bring robust support for various versioning and publishing strategies right out of the box, as well as built-in ways of publishing packages to various registries and for various languages. We're also excited about the possibility of using this command as a standardized way of deploying user-facing apps to production. For more on NX release, check out our API docs now on nx.dev, and be sure to check out the recording of James Henry's talk at nxconf. I'll make sure to include the link in the description below. All right, folks, I've saved one of the very best for last, and that is our new experimental NX project inference API version two. At NX, we're obsessed with building a better, more robust 
experience for our developers. And towards this end, we're now in version two of our project inference API. Now our project inference API is a way of inferring project boundaries without having to specify a specific project JSON file like you might see in your typical integrated NX repos. Now this API is very promising as a way of extending NX to make it more welcoming to other languages and other platforms where they already have some sort of concept around module boundaries or project boundaries that are already native to their language or platform. Version 2 changes the way that plugin authors can interface with this API, but more interestingly, it now provides a way of creating dynamic targets inside of projects as well as drawing project boundaries. This is very interesting as it opens a whole new door to providing a better developer experience for our developers without having to throw tons of config into every project inside of every workspace. Now for most developers, this API doesn't really change the way you're going to work with NX workspaces. The one thing that might change is when you look at your project.json file, previously you could expect that the target's listed there are the only targets that exist for that project. But now because this API can dynamically add new targets for you, your projects may now have some dynamic targets that you can't see inside your project JSON file. In order to see these, you can use our new NX show command and run the command NX show project and then the name of your project. This will give you your derived project configuration if you ever really need to see that. And for our plugin authors, please be sure to check out the V2 documentation of the new project inference API. There's definitely some interesting stuff there. And we actually do intend to use more and more of this concept of dynamic dynamic targets inside of our own first party plugins in the near future. So keep an eye out for that. I really think this will open a whole new door for creating much better and more robust developer experiences inside of NX workspaces. So as you can tell, I'm really jazzed for that. All right, that's it for all the new features for NX 17. I had to re-record the end of this video because Jeff Cross, our CEO, just promised on Twitter that if we hit 20,000 GitHub stars by the end of day today, Tuesday, he will buy me this life-size carbon cutout of Hulk Hogan. So. YouTube, do your thing. As of my recording, we're about 200 stars shy. So if we can make it happen, you'll see Hulk Hogan behind me from now on, at least until Yuri makes me take it out. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching. We really appreciate y'all's support. I'm really excited for y'all to get your hands on all this cool stuff. Keep working hard. We'll see you next time. Peace.